Being a cattle rancher himself, Governor Brad Little is very familiar with the situation. I remember vividly when they first came in. One of the first wolves in Idaho, we had a neighbor see a wolf jump on a calf, one of these calves and break its back. And I called the officials and they said, oh, there's no wolves up there. In that particular case, the wolf had a bad tracking collar, so officials had no idea where he was. Wolves are smart, and as the packs grew and moved around the state, ranchers in remote areas were the first to see what was about to happen. And it's very geographic specific. We got the Frank Church River No Return Wilderness, right. 3.2 million acres, and if you're right on the edge of that, and you're, you've had land that you bought or was in your family for years, right. it's really unfair because the wolves are there all the time. Just this past week, Idaho Fish and Game asked for public comments on their proposal to extend wolf hunting and trapping in Idaho. Lawmakers who sponsored the measure said they want the state's wolf population reduced to the allowed minimum of 150 to reduce attacks on livestock. We got lots of, lots of habitat in Idaho. I think all they're asking is let's put the wolves where they're gonna uh, fit into the environment the best. The governor points out that wolf packs dislocate a lot of wildlife herds, and that in itself is a problem. In the worst case scenario, kind of out by Fairfield, they dislocate those elk and they come down and they might be on the freeway and somebody might get killed because the elk might be down there because they've been run out of the habitat we wanted them in. Bottom line, are the wolves going to disappear? The issue we're gonna do away with 90% of the wolves is absolutely impossible. Don Nelson, Idaho News 